Chapter 15 of Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mike Vendetti. Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics by George Washington Plunkett. Chapter 15 Concerning Gas in Politics. Since the 80 cent gas bill was defeated in Albany, everybody's talking about senators being bribed. Now, I wasn't in the Senate last session, and I don't know the ins and outs of everything that was done, but I can tell you that the legislators are often hauled over the coals when they are all on the level. I've been there, and I know. For instance, when I voted in the Senate in 1904 for the Remsen Bill, that the newspapers called the Astoria Gas Grab Bill, they didn't do a thing to me. The papers kept up a howl about all the supporters of the bill being bought up by the Consolidated Gas Company and the Citizens' Union did me the honor to call me the Commander-in-Chief of the Black Horse Cavalry. The fact is that I was working for my district all this time, and I wasn't bribed by nobody. There's several of these gas houses in the district, and I wanted to get them over to Astoria for three reasons. First because they're nuisances. Second, because there's no votes in them for me any longer. Third, because, well, I had a little private reason which I'll explain further on. I needn't explain how they're nuisances. They're worse than open sewers. Still, I might have stood that if they hadn't degenerated so much in the last few years. Ah, gas houses ain't what they used to be. Not very long ago, each gas house was good for a couple of hundred votes. All the men employed in them were Irishmen and Germans who lived in the district. Now it is all different. The men are Dagos who live across in Jersey and take no interest in the district. What's the use of having ill smelling gas houses if there's no votes in them? Now as to my private reason. Well, I'm a business man and go in for any business that's profitable and honest. Real estate is one of my specialties. I know the value of every foot of ground in my district. And I calculated long ago that if them gas houses were removed, surrounding property would go up 100%. When the Remsen bill providing for the removal of the gas houses to Queens County came up, I said to myself, George, hasn't your chance come? I answered, sure. Then I sized up the chances of the bill. I found it was certain to pass the Senate and Assembly, and I got assurances straight from headquarters that Governor Odell would sign it. Next I came down to the city to find out the mayor's position. I got it straight, that he would approve the bill, too. Can't you guess what I did then? Like any sane man who had my information, I went in and got options on a lot of the property around the gas houses. Well, the bill went through the Senate and the Assembly all right, and the mayor signed it. But Odell backslided at the last minute, and the whole game fell through. If it had succeeded, I guess I would have been accused of grafting. What I want to know is, what do you call it when I got left and lost a pot of money? I not only lost money, but I was abused for voting for the bill. Wasn't that outrageous? They said I was in with the Consolidated Gas Company, and all other kinds of rot, when I was really only working for my district and trying to turn an honest penny on the side. Anyhow, I got a little fun out of the business. When the Remsen bill was up, I was trying to put through a bill of my own the Spiutan Diable Bill, which provided for filling in some land under water that the New York Central Railroad wanted. Well, the Remsen managers were afraid of being beaten, and they went around offering to make trades with senators and assemblymen who had bills they were anxious to pass. They came to me and offered six votes for my Spiutan Diable Bill in exchange for my vote on the Remsen Bill took them up in a hurry, and they felt pretty sore afterwards when they heard I was going to vote for the Remsen bill anyhow. A word about the Spiutan Doyovo bill. I was criticized a lot for introducing it. 
They said I was working in the interest of the New York Central, and was going to get the contract for fillin' in. The fact is that the fillin' in was a good thing for the city, and if it helped the New York Central to, what of it? The railroad is a great public institution, and I was never an enemy of public institutions. As to the contract, it hasn't come along yet. If it does come, it will find me at home at all proper and reasonable hours, if there is a good profit in sight. The papers and some people are always ready to find wrong motives in what us statesmen do. If we bring about some big improvement that benefits a city, and it just happens, as a sort of coincidence, that we make a few dollars out of the improvement, they say we are grafters. But we are used to this kind of ingratitude. It falls to the lot of all statesmen, especially Tammany statesmen. All we can do is to bow our heads in silence and wait till time has cleared our memories. Just think of mentioning dishonest graft in connection with the name of George Washington Plunkett, the man who gave the city its magnificent chain of parks, its Washington Bridge, its Speedway, its Museum of Natural History, its 155th Street Viaduct, and its West Side Courthouse? I was the father of the bills that provided for all these, yet because I supported the Remsen and Spiutin Duevil bills, some people have questioned my honest motives. If that's the case, how can you expect legislatures to fare who are not the fathers of the parks, the Washington Bridge? the speedway, and the viaduct. Now understand, I ain't defending the senators who killed the 80-cent gas bill. I don't know why they acted as they did. I only want to impress the idea to go slow before you make up your mind that a man, occupying the exalted position that I held for so many years, has done wrong. For all I know, these senators may have been as honest and high-minded about the gas bill as I was about the Remsen and Spiutin-Dyaville bills. End of chapter 15